Hello fellow travelers. We're here at the Spokane station a little early, but we're about to get on the Empire Builder. Instead of doing a normal vlog, I want to do a video about why you should travel on the Empire Builder. So this is the Empire Builder. It's time to get on board the Empire Builder. While we're getting on the train, let me tell you a few facts about this train. The Empire Builder has been in operation since 1929. Originally, it was operated by the Great Northern Railroad, and today it's operated by Amtrak. Over the years, there's been a few small minor modifications to the route, but basically the Empire Builder runs from Chicago to Seattle and Portland. An unusual feature of the Empire Builder is it has two endpoints. So in Spokane, the train splits into two trains. One section goes to Seattle and the other section goes to Portland. The distance from Chicago to Seattle is 2,206 miles and the distance from Chicago to Portland is 2,257 miles. And in case you're wondering how long it takes to travel from Chicago to the West Coast, two nights. So three days and two nights to make the full journey. So in this video, I want to share with you why you should travel aboard the Empire Builder. And the number one reason is Glacier National Park. The Great Northern Railroad played a huge part in the development of Glacier National Park. So basically from the east entrance to the west entrance, the railroad follows the contour of the park. So in the park you've got four stops. East Glacier, Essex, West Glacier, and then Whitefish. Technically that's not in the park, but still a lot of people use it for the park. And since the railroad was bringing all these people to the park, they needed hotels. So the Great Northern Railroad built most of the hotels within the park. In fact, if you're staying at a hotel within the park, it was probably built by the Great Northern Railroad. Be sure to ask for the history of your hotel. Since the train follows the contours of the park from the east entrance to the west entrance, you'll see parts of the park that you can only see from the train. That's a pretty unusual feature that it's got special views for Amtrak passengers only. For many families, taking the train to Glacier National Park is a tradition. One question that people ask is what about transportation within the park? And the answer is don't worry about it. The hotels have shuttles or you can take the jammer buses. And the next reason you should consider taking the Empire Builder is because it serves many remote communities that don't have any other form of public transportation. We've all heard the term flyover country, and this is exactly the country that the Empire Builder services. So the airplanes go from one point to the other point, but don't stop here. So this means the Empire Builder is basically the only form of public transportation available to many communities. Otherwise, you have to get in the car and drive several hours to get to an airport, or several hours to even get to a bus. So the Empire Builder provides a vital link in transportation. And the next reason that you should take the Empire Builder is because of the landscape. There's no better way to see the USA than from the train. Think about this, from the airplane, you'll see nothing but the clouds. From your car, all you'll see is the windshield. But on the train, you'll see America. Starting from Chicago, some of the sites that you'll see include the big cities along Lake Michigan, including Chicago and Milwaukee. Then you'll see the dairy farms of Wisconsin, and then the 10,000 lakes of Minnesota. After that, you'll see the beauty of the plains of North Dakota and Montana, and then the Rocky Mountains. And if your train continues to Seattle, you'll see the apple orchards of eastern Washington, the Cascade Mountains, and Puget Sound. If you continue on to Portland, you'll see the Columbia River, and Mount Hood. And the next reason you should take the Empire Builder is because of winter sports and skiing. In the winter months, many people refer to the Empire Builder simply as the ski train because of all the ski resorts that are along the route. Let me explain how the ski train works. So for example, we'll go to Whitefish, Montana and Big Mountain and we'll have a West Coast departure. So imagine you have a three-day weekend and you're gonna go skiing. 
So the train leaves from Seattle and Portland around 4.30 in the afternoon. You get on the train, you have dinner, you go to bed, and in the morning you wake up in Whitefish, Montana, where you go up to the mountain and ski. So you have a great week in skiing, and finally it's time to come home. So you head down to the Whitefish station and board the train around 8 p.m. So that means that you got to ski all day until the evening when you got on the train. Once you're on the train, you have dinner, you go to bed, and in the morning you wake up and you're either in Portland or Seattle. So thanks to the Empire Builder, you were able to have a great ski weekend. So go ahead and do some research and find out what ski resorts are along the line of the Empire Builder. And then book your ticket. You'll have a great time aboard the ski train. And if skiing just isn't your thing, that's okay. The Empire Builders are some great year-round resort towns. Let's learn more about those. Three resort towns that come to the top of my mind right now are Wisconsin Dells, Whitefish, Montana, and Leavenworth, Washington. And since these are resort towns, you really don't need to get a rental car. So you can just call the hotel and have them pick you up at the station and then take you back to the station when your vacation's over. In the comments section below, go ahead and write down what city along the Empire Builder Line do you think would be a great place to have a vacation. I think everybody will be interested in knowing what your thoughts are. And our next reason to travel aboard the Empire Builder is because it will give you a true slice of Americana. So on this train, you'll really get to experience the American people. In another one of my videos, I said that when you go to the dining car or the lounge car, you'll meet new people and make new friends. And that's going to happen aboard the Empire Builder. So the Empire Builder travels over 2,000 miles from Chicago to the West Coast. And along those 2,000 miles, there's many different cultures. And on board the Empire Builder, you'll meet many of those cultures. This train's almost a melting pot. On the train, you'll probably have the opportunity to meet techies, you'll meet the ranchers, you'll meet the cowboys, you'll meet the oil men, and you'll probably meet somebody with a Fargo accent. So go ahead and experience the American culture aboard the Empire Builder. Okay, we're nearing the end of our video. But before we close, I want to share the top reasons why you should travel aboard the Empire Builder. Glacier National Park was built for the Empire Builder. The Empire Builder serves remote communities. You get to see the American landscape. The Empire Builder is a great ski train. And it also serves many resort towns. And aboard the Empire Builder, you'll get a real slice of American life. So those are some of my reasons for traveling aboard the Empire Builder. In the comments section below, go ahead and write down why would you tell somebody to travel aboard the Empire Builder. I'd be very curious to see what other people have to say. We can all agree that no matter how you're using the Empire Builder to travel, for work, for pleasure, or for commuting, it's a great way to travel. And those are the reasons why you should travel aboard the Empire Builder. So I wanted to say thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the little bell to be notified of future videos. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video.